framing. So bloom framing is when you frame a wall in the, in the air, in place, uh, as opposed to most conventional framing, which is you lay it down on the wall, you stand it up after it's built. So when you have a sloped feeling like this, which is common in a lot of situations, um, you have to balloon frame the walls. And so we're gonna get into a lot of different uh, framing tips about the process. Uh, be more general than just balloon framing. Um, show you some things to look for, to watch out for, some tips to help you uh, make sure all your framing goes together smooth and straight. Let's get to it. Here we see the literal description of balloon framing according to Google. However, carpentry is very rich in slang, so some crews might call a particular process one thing and it and it may not be universal. You might find people using the same terms to mean different things. And so anyways for us, uh balloon framing just means, you know, to frame something in the air, to frame it in place as opposed to a normal framing process, which is laying a wall down on the floor, building it on the floor, then standing it up, you know, fully assembled, putting a floor system on that, and then doing the same process over and over. Um, so anytime we have to frame a gable in the air, we call it balloon framing. You know, if we build a gable on the ground and stand it up, that's not balloon framing. Uh, so sorry if there's any confusion uh, in the way that I use this term, but uh, this is kind of a local a local attitude towards balloon framing, I guess. Anyways, back to the show. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you guys is the difference between uh, an interior wall connection and an exterior wall connection. So on an interior wall connection, we'll, we'll put what we call a full buck. So what you get is this little U-shaped construction where the center of the wall aligns with the center, center stud. And what this does is that when your wall aligns on the other side, you get a full drywall nailer on each side. So this is a full buck connection and we do this on every interior partition location. This is what it looks like on the inside. So you can see you've got drywall nailer here, drywall nailer here. And when you nail this wall together, you can basically just follow the, the reveal of your buck in order to locate where your wall goes. Don't worry about plumbing it um, because it's gonna be plumbed when you straighten your exterior walls. Interior partitions, you don't wanna plumb them that's kind of a mistake if you haven't straightened your exterior walls. And then um, on the exterior connection, what we do is we put in these block, uh, these little backers. And the reason why we do this is so that you can insulate behind this. So if you can imagine a full buck going all the way to the wall on both sides here, it would create a trapped airspace behind the wall that you couldn't insulate. Plus it's kind of a pain in the ass to run your wires and feed through a buck. Um, Back when I first started framing, that was kind of the norm, but um, 20 years have gone by and you know we've all got a little bit smarter. Um, it's important to set these at two foot centers. So you can either do 16 or four foot, 16 and go, two foot and go. But what's important is that um, you're putting these in in order to receive drywall. So if they put run, if they lay their sheets down four foot wide, they're gonna have a solid nailer at the corner. That is really important. So just the difference between bucks there, because what we're doing here on one side of our wall, where our balloon framing is gonna meet the exterior, you can see we put in some backing here. So that's kind of step one, get your backing in. Step two, lay out your walls. So you can see we have our walls all laid out here. And then the next step is gonna to be to project these lines onto the rafters. Well, the contrast is too shitty here if you guys can see this, but basically I've snapped a line across here. However, there's an important pitfall here that probably every carpenter has done at least once. So what's important to notice is that when we frame this, when we bloom frame this wall, we're gonna nail our top plate to the rafters. Right, it's gonna go like that, to the rafters. And then we're going to plane the studs into this edge right here, okay? 
which means that when you plumb up your bottom plate, you're making a mark on your rafter. It's actually off from where the edge of your nailer is gonna go, okay? So that's the problem. So if you were to actually project this line up, nail your stud there, and then put your bring your stud over to this edge, you would, it would actually be out of plumb, okay? So again, when you're making your line, your initial mark is marking the plane of the wall, okay? Then you have to subtract the distance that your pitch is gonna fall in an inch and a half thickness of board. So you're gonna make a secondary mark back. So because this is a 12 pitch, inch and a half up, inch and a half down, it's really easy. When I project my wall up, I know that I'm gonna mark it an inch and a half lower, okay? I'll show you that. Okay, so you can see right here, this is the actual plane of the wall, which I marked and then I did I subtracted for the pitch, which is a 12 pitch, so I went an inch and a half back, snapped my line. And then when I nail my top plate on, it'll go on the secondary line. And once it's plumb, it'll actually project up to that secondary mark, or the first mark. So again, same thing down here. This is where the wall, this is actually where the wall is plumb but because it's gonna align, it's gonna plane with this edge right here. That's where you need to nail it. And you can see how if I put this right here, this corner is already out quite a bit. So I push your wall out of plumb. So I think probably everybody's done that maybe once. So it's an important thing to understand. Uh, let me show you briefly how to calculate that for something that's different than a 12 pitch. All right, so here's a better illustration of uh, what I was doing with, with my lines I'm marking on my rafters. And in this case, we're gonna use a 612. So you can see how when you snap your line on the bottom, when you lay out your floor on the bottom, you got a chalk line, you plumb it up with a laser or a level and you make a mark on your rafter. And then you have to measure back the offset for that particular pitch. Now with a 12 pitch, I know that if it's a inch and a half run, it's gonna be an inch and a half rise. That's how I know the offset is that. However, for a 612 pitch, you have to do a little calculation. Six inch pitch, we'll put inch and a half run, and then we'll hit the rise button. And that's gonna be three quarters. So this is gonna have a three quarter offset. Let me just make sure I did that correctly. Six inch pitch. One and a half run. The rise button, three quarter. So that's the scenario. Um, in most of these cases, the backside of these little sections are just attic space, unfinished. So I don't really worry about where my two by four hits here. Um, obviously, the longer this gets, as in like a 12 pitch, you know, it's gonna be hanging way past the plate, but if you had something that was very shallow and this corner was actually into the wall, it might be something that you might wanna rip. But for the most part, uh, I don't really think it's worth the effort. Again, if you did wanna rip all your top plates at a, uh, you know, at a six pitch bevel, you wouldn't have to do any of this, uh, but it doesn't take very long. And, the way we like to do it. Information. The next cheater tip here is to when you're putting this top plate on. When I'm nailing this on here, I can't just go buck wild and nail it wherever I want. It's very important that I make sure that these rafters are straight. So it's important that I transfer the layout from the bottom onto this plate before I nail it. So that I'm sure that when I butt into this wall, the distance from my first rafter is the same as the distance from the wall to the first rafter at the bottom. And it's a really important thing that a lot of people do wrong. They get ahead of themselves, they'll nail this on. And then when they get up to sheet the roof, they're like, what the hell is going on? My rafters are all out of whack. So anytime you're nailing something, you know, just keep in mind that 
you are permanently fastening that framing member and you want it to be straight plumb square whatever it is don't don't put a nail in anything unless you're sure all those um requirements are met so because this butts into the gable and my plate is going to butt into the gable i can hook onto that i see it's 16 16 and go I come down here to my wall. I can butt in, mark 16, and then lay it all out that way. Then when I butt into my wall here, again, making sure that this is plumb before I use that as a reference point, which it is. You can see that we have it braced. And then all these should come in really true. Now you'll notice I have a jog in my wall and this jog lands in between two rafters. So I have to put some additional backing in here in order to catch this where my wall ends. And this is another thing that's really important. Yeah, you can't just measure anywhere between here. Like for example, this says 14, but I know for certain that a 16 inch layout minus an inch and a half is gonna leave me a 14 and a half inch space in between here. So some of that stuff is just general knowledge once you've been framing for a while, but the pro tip here and the message is that whenever you're putting in blocking, whether it's fire stopping, wall blocking, whatever it is, always take your number at the bottom of the wall. Always measure where your framing member is fastened, okay? And here's a, another little shortcut could do, you know, instead of measuring, you just cheat like that, and just take your, you know, transfer your mark directly from butting your piece where it goes, that's a little shortcut. So now it's time to get a stud length. I just wanted to also show you guys something that I did here. I nailed a little block on the end of this just to help me align it. That way, when I was building it by myself, if my bottom plate number to my layout there, if I cut the same board for the top and I align it flush with the end of the wall and my wall is plumb, it's kind of like, uh, you know, we're just making a parallel board here. If this wall is plumb and the top and bottom are the same length, then I know that the end of my board is plumb with the end of that. So in order to make it easier to do, I just nailed a block on so I could basically butt it to the end of my wall and not have to try to align six different things all at once. So just a little shortcut there. Our next step. Our next step is going to be to get a common number on this wall that we're building here. And once we do that, we're gonna gang cut all these studs. So now I'm all set up to start gang cutting my studs. I've got them all clamped in here. I made sure to square them up on one end. Hold my number over here. I've got saw squatch ready to make a big old cut. 
but something that's important to do when you're stacking these studs is to make sure that they're all crowned the same way. And what that means is that when you look down the edge of this board, it's gonna be hard to see on a, this camera, but there's a slight, slight curvature to most lumber. And you wanna make sure that when you're putting studs in a wall, all of your crowns are facing the same way. You don't want to have a situation where there's a slight curve on one stud, a slight curve on the other, and then what happens is the difference between the two, your drywall or your siding is going to be very wavy. So when you're building exterior walls, building interior walls, setting joists, setting rafters, everything should be crowned. And uh, you do that by just sighting the edge of it. And again, we're trying to pay attention to which way it's going this way. I don't care how it's bending this way, right? So if it's got curvature up and down this way, not matter, that can be straightened out with the drywall. But what can't be straightened is the curvature this way. So when I stacked all these, they were all sighted, they are all crowned up. And here we go. I've got the first section of my wall framed. It's time to start transferring this little jog up to the ceiling. So I repeat the same process as before, using my laser to project my layout line all the way up. I subtracted my offset, so that's an inch and a half down. This is the actual plumb line of the plate. Same thing on the other end, down there. Measure down an inch and a half again, and then Troy and I snapped a line. So that gave us the location of our two by four plate. Which will be nailed on that line like so. Now, to figure out where this ends, we're just working with some known variables. Like for example, I know that this corner is square. So if I were to take a square five and a half inches back, because that is the width of this wall, or I could square up the outside, that works as well. But basically setting my square up there, describing that line up, now I know where my top plate of my wall ends. I had to add a, another backer here because once I put the nailer on for my two by six wall, I didn't, I wasn't hitting any meat there. So now we're rocking and rolling. So final step is to figure out how long this plate needs to be up top. And again, the trick is, as always, we measure the floor. It would be a huge mistake to hook onto that mark and measure over to the gable and cut that size because, well, for one, nothing's, this gable, this gable's quite movable right now. And if I cut this too long and nailed it on there, now I'd be basically nailing my gable out of plumb. And since, it is really important that your gable is straight. Straight and plumb should be the same thing. But what you do is you want to make sure that your gable is straight. So what we usually do is when we're sheeting the roof, we'll cut a straight line on the outer edge and we'll move our gable to the line of our plywood. And that will make sure that our gable is straight, that our overhang is straight, and that when somebody's standing down there on the ground having a beer or looking up, they don't see their overhang going, doing the wave doing the worm so back to this plate so I want to make sure that I measure from the bottom to the bottom and if that corner is plumb this corner is plumb in theory right but not always in practice because again we just want to make sure that we're straight over there so what I'm going to do is whatever this measures I'm going to cut this top plate about 3 8 smaller 
And the reason is that'll give me three eighths of overcompensation. So let's say I need to bring this gable in a little bit. I won't be sabotaged by my top plate butting into it, holding it out at a fixed position. I'm, I wanna be able to have options later on. So I'm not committing myself to a certain length. And uh, this is probably the most important part about being a framer is uh, recognizing the next step and not sabotaging yourself. So when we transferred our layout from these plates to the ceiling, we were committing ourselves. I just locked all those rafters in place, but I know they're straight because I transferred the layout from the bottom. So they're, they're all parallel. Anyways, so this measured 184. I'm gonna cut the top plate at 185, I'm sorry, 183 and 5 8 And we're gonna nail it on there. It's gonna be 3 8 short from the gable, which is gonna allow my gable to move later on. Here we go. Okay, so you can see, I put a nail to butt into, a couple of guiding nails along the way, so I can just I don't have to try to juggle too many balls at once. I can hold my board up tight to the nails. But what I forgot to do was lay out my top plate. So we can make sure that's done. So in order to transfer the layout onto here, I'm gonna hold this at a 16. 16 and go. The edge of this is at 19 and 3 quarters, which means I can put 19 and 3 quarters there and pick right up on my 16 and go layout. So again, hold the 16, seeing what number aligns with the edge, and then bringing it forward. And then I can carry on that layout all the way down. give you a little look at what I'm trying to do up here. So you can see it's a lot of things to line up. I got to hold it on the chalk line. I've got to hold it flush with the layout. So this is where the nails help you. You can just hold it tight. So as I'm nailing these, I'm going to be pushing this up tight, bringing it over to layout, and then obviously raising it up. Very often with crooked ass lumber, you have to work the board. So. I'm not gonna get very much leverage 16 inches away from this. So since this is slowly running downhill away from my line, I might go down four or five feet, four or five layouts. Raise that up and nail it right here. And that'll hold the rest of my layout on the mark. All right, now I got this wall ready to plunk some studs in here. I took a couple measurements. I came up with a consistent number. Now I just need to put in my buck and my uh, first stud on this side. This side I'll put the studs going here. So this is probably the only stud I'll need for this wall. This stud will make the corner for the rest of this. Um, but I know these studs are 83, so that means when I cut one on a flat, instead of being on a pitch cut, it'll be on a bevel. And then the first stud after that, I already know the number for both of these without, you know, just by taking existing knowledge. So I line these two up. My buck in the wall flushes up with the wall. The next one goes right on top of it. So um, this is kind of aimed at more beginner framing things, but just want to demonstrate how a lot of times when you have one number it will give you all the other numbers that follow so the long point of the first stud will be the short point of the second stud is my point so um yeah then we'll cut these studs zap them in and then that's pretty much it that's it's like the whole process
there you have it guys how to bloom frame plus some bonus framing tips uh, one thing to point out here guys remember i was talking about keeping this top plate short of the gable that way if the gable needs to move in or out later on when we sheet it it won't be locked in because i don't know if it's straight right now and plumbing it doesn't necessarily mean it's straight it should but it doesn't always so it's good to let that gable move and be free if your roof's not sheeted if you're doing this after the roof sheeted who cares you can skip a lot of these steps but sometimes this is just the order of operation and what's available at that day so I left this loose so our gable can still move and the guys are straightening this gable later on if they need to move it in or out it won't be locked in and committed to this wall that I just built so yeah that's how you bloom frame plus some other things hope you guys learned something frame on